are back with you tonight. Thanks for staying on. Parliament's subcommunications committee says it has not been able to deliberate on the 34 names uh, to recommend uh, the 12 most suitable candidates to serve on the SABC board. The delay have been blamed on the slow progress in uh, background vetting of the new members by the state security agency. The names of uh, Prospective candidates were first submitted as early as September 8th uh, and uh, before the last board's term expired on October 15th. Frustrated civil society groups have lamented the lack of board oversight in a public organization with irregular expenditure running into billions of rands. Joining us now to explain the committee's frustration is a DA member of uh, the Portfolio Committee on Communications, Diane Kola Barnett. Diane, good evening. Good to have you and thank you very much for your time. Uh, first and foremost, as far as the regulatory framework is concerned, in other words, the vetting policy, do we have an approved policy in place and how things should actually be done? Well, I can't think of an actual policy, but certainly... Uh, all candidates must be vetted. And I'm not talking top secret security clearance, such as one has to obtain to sit on the Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence. It's a basic vetting to ensure that people aren't massively in debt, that they have no criminal records, those sorts of issues. Um, and frankly, and I'm quite new to this committee, I was horrified that this matter had been left so late considering the fact that for so many years um, vetting has been one of the major issues, both in the SAPs and in state security, in fact, all areas, defence force everywhere. Vetting is an issue. So to leave this till the last minute uh, in the full knowledge that it may well not happen smacks of something rather odd. Uh, they've known for five years the day on which this board would complete its term, and yet they weren't, they weren't moving. They weren't ready. Um, the, the minister apparently wrote to the committee on the 13th of June this year, uh, reminding them of the impending expiry of the board's term of office, why they needed to wait for the minister to tell them to do their job, I have no idea. And it took months, months and months, before uh, eventually the subcommittee was created, I had just arrived on the committee the next day. Uh, 120 candidate CVs came to me. Uh, the shortlisting of 37 out of the 120 had to be done by the morning of the next day. That was run past our caucuses. It was adopted a few hours after that. And the interviews proper began uh, a few days later. So it, it was done at record speed, having delayed months and months and months past uh, a a time I think they should have started. Yeah. And although we finished, as you said, on the 26th of September, uh, we sit, we wait. And uh, look, the state security agency claim they've done their part. They say it's the SAPs causing the delays. Uh, we know the SAPs have got issues with their um, systems in terms of police clearance certificates. But, of course, when I asked Becky Kelly about this, he was most indignant. So it's, again, a situation of he said, she said, everybody blaming everybody else. The point is they haven't all been cleared, and so we wait. And the board is now set for over two months. Uh, I mean, the, the SABC is set for over two months without a board. And here we have one of the biggest state-owned enterprises in the country uh, with with – Nobody at the helm, no. uh, left entirely under the CEO, CFO, and C. I mean, it's an extraordinary situation. And yeah. as you quite rightly said, $2.8 in irregular expenditure. So I'm going to come to that in a moment. But I want us to, to go back again. You're saying that what is now currently seemingly a bottleneck is... Uh, I suppose criminal clearance, uh, if, if I'm, I understand you correctly, the process of the SEPs. So all the other yes. vetting processes, qualification, and so on and so forth, uh, have, have now been done. Well, look, they're not too clear on that. They're simply saying we have completed five this week, four this week. It's dragging on and on. Uh, I ask every Tuesday when this committee meets, it only meets once a week, uh, and I ask what is the situation, and we're we're told another few have been done. But it's a number of things that have to be checked. Um, but I gather the bottleneck is, is from receiving the criminal record checks 
um, which have to be done by the SAPs, not by the state security agency. So here we sit, um, no board and no oversight. You know, I, yeah. I've got people asking me if it's deliberate, yeah. uh, considering the Congress coming up, yeah. and the answer is I don't know. I mean, this process, Diane, being as opaque as you're saying it is, how are you as the committee able to uh, determine and ascertain that corruption is not in any way involved in this vetting process? Well, I, I have to tell you, I've sat on the JSCI, Joint Standing Committee on Intelligence, for the last three years. So um, I, I don't believe that there would be an element of that. I, I just I just can't see that happening. I, I, I do believe it's being possibly held up because of um, mechanical failures. Something's not working. I, I don't know that it's deliberate, but of course the fact that it started, the process started so late um, may well have been deliberate. I don't know. Either way, we're sitting with a, with a massive entity with huge financial difficulties. Yeah. Um, the board has been dissolved and now they sit with, with no oversight from that level. And as it's, it's a huge problem. The yeah. Auditor General is extremely worried and uh, we're talking about a net loss of 201 million. So I, I read in, in, in one publication, one report, uh, one of the other opposition parties saying that the problem could have been uh, maybe in the technology or the technological system that is, is, is required by the SAPS as far as the vetting process is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, is that what you're hearing as well? Is, is, is this a lack of technology uh, that we are, facing with, uh, we are faced with here in terms of dealing with what needs to be done? Look, that is what I've heard, that the police clearance certificates, it's all run by a computerized system. You know the issues they've had. They've had issues um, with the owners of systems uh, not being paid, shutting systems down. There, there are a lot of issues within um, obtaining uh, firearm licenses, etc. All of that is, has been slowed down massively. So it may simply be that. Um, a series of issues that have slowed the system down. Either way, I don't care what's caused it. It should have been predicted because these have been issues that have gone on for a very long time. And to, to leave a minuscule amount of time to get through the clearance, it's now down to 34 people, not 37 anymore, three pulled out. Um, so, you know, it's, it's very frustrating. And then eventually when it is completed, we have to have a whole meeting where we sit and, and try and work through who wants who on the board and then we do the horse trading. So it's, it's still quite a long process to go and we do only have, um, what, three weeks left in, yeah. in Parliament. Yeah. And, of course, it's got to be approved in the National Assembly before yes. it can go through to the President for final concurrence. So there's a lot of still to get through, um, but all the focus seems to be on the post bank at the moment and nothing on on this which i think is is far more important very interesting that you raise the fact that of course we are weeks away uh, from the the mm. anc's elective conference uh, and and we yeah. know for example the the, the kind of um, you know, sometimes tensions, maybe, let me use that light word, but maybe you'd want to use a little bit stronger one, that has been existing between the minister and the board at, at the SABC. Do, do, do you suspect that this could be a deliberate um, uh, delay uh, to see what comes out of the process uh, of, of, of Nazarek and, and therefore which minister would want which board sitting at the SABC? Well, that could well be the case. There were people on that board who were determined to do the right thing. There were people on the board who did not want the head of news fired, chucked out on a, on a ridiculous claim, um, should never have happened. But doing that and putting in someone who has very little experience, in fact, none in broadcasting at all, um, speaks to me of starting to set the SABC up uh, for the, the 2024 election and to have it back in the ANC pocket where it used to be. Now, of course, everyone in the SABC, news-wise, uh, has, has tried very hard to maintain a level of credibility 
as far as news is concerned. But to have that happen um, was such a blow. And, of course, the, the booting out of 700-odd staff hardly assisted morale. And, uh, and now they're advertising to pull back about 450. Um, so it, it was a bizarre exercise to go through. And I'm guessing that a lot of the law um, legal matters that they're facing now pertain to to those issues exactly. They may be locked up in court for, for years to come. So they have huge issues, huge financial issues, and I mean the very fact that they uh, the Auditor General says they didn't even put their, their books to be, together correctly, they, their accounts are not drawn up correctly in terms of the PMFA guidelines. I mean, the sorts of things that are going on there um, it, it's almost inconceivable, inconceivable that it's been allowed to happen. But then again, it happened on the watch of the previous board, so there's nothing to say that the new board will be any more successful yeah. uh, in terms of what seems to be deliberate undermining. I mean, they even paid 12 million rand for empty offices. That's the sort of thing that's been going on there. Now, as far as the committee is concerned, then, uh, have you exhausted all the powers that you have in the couple of weeks that you have still left? Have you written, for example, to the political head who should account? Uh, have you tried other means? Do you have subpoenaing powers? Are there any powers that you have at your disposal that you can currently use, and are they being blocked? Look, I think um, vetting is vetting. It's got to be done correctly. It's got to be slowly, methodically done. Um, one can't cut corners. There's no point in appointing a board and then you find out afterwards that that person has a major issue, a criminal record. Um, you know, issues have come up on uh, surrounding certain of the, the members of the previous board. Um, and when they came for interviews, I was astounded at some of the issues and thought, what were they doing on the board in the first place? Now, those, this is something they're, they're hoping that the vetting will, um, will prevent. But certainly, you know, we can't have a situation where we've gone through this entire process and then we put people on the board who, who have some sort of issue that may, may come back and, and bite the board, um, in a year's time, for example. So it has to be done methodically and carefully. It just should have been started four months earlier. I, I really do believe that should have been the case. We watch this one carefully. Dan Kola Bernard, appreciate your time. Thanks so much uh, for coming on, dear MP and uh, Portfolio Committee on a Communications member there, Diane Kola Bernard.